Hey, Dan Sumner here, and welcome to the Bloggers Roadmap Bootcamp Day 5. Now, in this training video, I want to talk about traffic tips and the first visitors to your blog. Now, once you get started, and if you haven't seen the rest of the series, um, you can check the links below and you can start again from day one. Um, if you have continued on the course and you need a refresher, just go back a couple of days and you'll pick up where we left off. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss a few traffic tips and getting those initial visitors to your blog. Because without visitors, your blog just becomes another hobby or another website on WebSpace that you know friends and family may visit once or twice. So you need to create a good traffic strategy to get those visitors to build your business. Now, let's get started with the basics. We've all seen it, we've all heard it, you've built it, but they won't come. So the statement was, if you build it, they will come. But if you build it, they won't come. It's a simple fact of business, uh, especially on the internet. Because there are so many blogs on the planet, um, I'm unsure of the precise number, but it could be in the, it, it definitely is in the millions. So imagine standing in a shopping mall with one million shops or one million stores, and there is a crowd of people trying to find your store. Now, without a map, without any links to get there, with out any word of mouth without direction I mean you get the point they're not going to get to your store and it's exactly the same with the blog if people don't know your blog exists then there's no way there they are actually going to find your blog online so how exactly is your blog found now there are a number of ways that we're going to talk about this through the next couple of slides and the first is search engine optimization. Now, search engine optimization is a very dark art and it changes daily. There are a ton of articles, there are a ton of blog posts, there are a ton of training courses out there on how to get the best from your SEO. And in the last video, we discussed the Yoast SEO plugin and how you can use this to really keyword, add header tags, add subheadings, and really optimize your post and give it the best chance to attract the search engines. So let's stick with that for now. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, every post you need to do, you need to check out the SEO post when you've written it and take a look on exactly how you need to better your post by adding keywords, adding header tags, adding images, linking to internal blogs in your site, linking to external sources, and really giving your chance, really giving your blog a chance to get found by the search engines. So ultimately, there are two crucial ingredients for effective SEO. And you'll notice this when you're creating posts on your blog and using this plugin at the same time. And those ingredients are keywords and links. And I'll also add header tags in there and possibly an image. Now, Google works by finding content and adding it, adding it where it keeps every single one of its links. And when somebody searches for a phrase, Google M refers to its database in order to retrieve the most relevant high quality web page in an attempt to answer the question. So. To show Google that our content is highly relevant, we need to add keywords and we need to add keywords to our blog posts and we need to add as many keywords as possible, but not try, but not try to make the post so keyword rich that it doesn't read like normal content. So what I find is when you write content, just add those keywords according to your SEO plugin but also write as you would mean to write. So your blog post doesn't 
look like it's stuffed completely with keywords because the last thing you want to do is is spoil your content now the best way to include keywords is to try and make the keywords appear as often as possible but not to add them too much so the best advice is follow a rule of about 0.5 to 2 percent density and um, that means you should be including a keyword once every 50 to 200 words and your keyword should be related to where you want to be in the search engines so let's take a look at a couple of tips to see how we can get that attention now you want to have a great title and in that title you need to keyword against your title uh, your keyword should be in the first paragraph you should try and put your keyword in the headers throughout your text and at times and always put your keyword or key phrase in the last paragraph now you should always use aim to use the key phrases in the code and the file names of your website so if you add an image your alt tag should be keyworded with the tag and what the image is your meter description which you would put in the SEO plugin your SEO title which would be seen on the SEO plugin Google graphic screen and also the slug of your web page so when you create that post it'll have a post slug and add the title and your keywords in the post slug now keywording your posts and creating great search search engine optimized posts is not going to do it alone you really need to create a traffic strategy if it was that simple everybody would be doing it so what we need to do now is we need to create another strategy and that's content marketing now you've probably heard this phrase a ton of times content is king the reason content is so crucial is the simple fact is the internet is built on information we live in an information age and it's solely built on providing content and good content so as I explained in the last slide it's not just about building keywords it's about building great and usable content that people read like and share so just how do we write that all super engaging blog post right so one of the key ingredients to your success is to write a high quality and high quality article now the more you write the more opportunity you create to be discovered the more questions you can answer the more people you can engage with and the more people will share your content and return to your blog this is traffic Now, the more this happens the more traffic you get the more subscribers you get the more customers you get and this is when you, ta you start to see an income whether it be from affiliate marketing whether it be from your own product whether it be from ads on your sites or you know whether you're building a list and doing something with that list selling physical products but it's this traffic that you see that's going to turn your blog from a hobby into a business what does the perfect blog post look like now first and most importantly every single post needs to have something to say so when it comes to creating the perfect blog post always always add extreme value now this is the most important have something to say add value and this will give people the opportunity to share and read and come back to your blog because there are a thousand articles all about the same stuff but if you are highly unique and you can create something that goes that extra mile that provides some high value that could in fact be even paid for then what you are creating is something extremely unique and valuable to the reader so creating the perfect blog post is not just about having perfect SEO it's not just about adding an image it's not just about adding a video to your post it's about providing extreme amounts of content that people find highly valuable and want to share email to other people and actually tell people about how good your content is and I'm guessing you've seen this on the internet quite a lot of times with some of the most prolific bloggers bloggers out there that the content they share 
what they have done, some kind of concept they have discussed, some kind of concept they've come up with. And these posts have gone completely viral because of the extreme value that that blog post actually has. So bear that in mind when you create your next post. Create a post with high value. Create a post that people want to share. Create a post that provides a solution to a problem. And it doesn't have to be a problem that, you know, that's completely unique in the planet because that's probably quite impossible. But it does have to have some concepts in there that really provide value to people and keeps them coming back and coming back for more. So moving on, I talked in the last slide about your perfect blog post and I talked about shares. Now, social media marketing has changed considerably in the last four to five years and it's not just a case of clicking here, share this post, somebody share this post on, on their Facebook page. There are four keys to social media marketing. Now let's take a look at these keys. Now the first key, value. I spoke in the last slide about about how valuable your content should be and what it provides. And it is it does sound like it's stating the obvious, but you know, if you write a two or three hundred word blog post on a subject and then, you know, some of the guy or some of the person writes a 1,300 word blog post on the same subject with images, with videos, with, you know, maybe it's an audio and really adding lots of value in there. You ask yourself a question, who is providing the most and who is going to get the most shares and who is going to get visitors coming back to their blog because of the amount of value that they have actually put into that post. Now, you can be as professional as you like on your blog, but if no one wants to read what you have to say, then you aren't going to get any followers, any social media shares, or any followers to your, followers to your social media accounts. But rule number one, always, always, always provide high value within your blog post. Okay, next on the list is community. There are a lot of companies out there that kind of feel like they've got to bombard you with the same content, share this, buy this, grab this, when really mostly people are looking for some information that's going to help them. So if you can provide this information to your community, then you're going to get traffic. Now, how to do this? Take Facebook, for example. Head off to Facebook, find all of the people in your niche. And I'm not going to say here, create your own Facebook group or create your own Facebook page because then you're still trying to drive traffic to a page or a group and a blog at the same time. So what it would be best to do is take that knowledge that you have already, take that post that you have already and find where your people hang out. It's as simple as that. Go and join Facebook groups where people are discussing discussing the topics in your niche. Hit Instagram where people are discussing the topics in your niche. Join groups. Integrate with pages. Go onto forums. Find these people wherever they are and join in. Provide value and when the time is right, push them to your blog. Now, like I said, you don't have to create your own pages. You just have to find where people are. And if you can provide value within these groups, within these forums, within these social media pages, then I guarantee traffic will come back to you. People will visit, will visit your sites. People will sign up for your newsletters, sign up for your mailing lists and buy your products. Okay, tip number three. Now what you can do with your blog and your social media platforms, the ones you decide to use, is interlink all of these platforms and remind people to follow you on the social media that you do hang out. So for example, 
use your social media influence to cross promote your all of your posts so when you start a new blog post share that with your Facebook group share that with your Facebook pages share that on your Instagram share that on your LinkedIn and this generates the social aspect and this generates traffic back to your blog because you've shared it on social media so it's it's not just about sharing that post on social media it's about getting people back to your blog so they can reshare on their social media now you can see the viral aspect of this so this all goes hand in hand if you create great content and you've put you know you've given that great content to other people you've put that out on social media people come back to your blog they reshare that content that goes to other people who didn't initially see or who aren't in your circulation and you can see how the viral aspect can spiral out of control just by creating excellent content and lastly tip number four consistency so what does consistency mean it means posting regularly it means having consistent messaging and branding and quality that means your content should be on as many platforms as possible and you should be active on those platforms now remember your blog should be recognizable on these platforms as well so it may sound a little confusing but how about a strategy that works like this create an excellent blog post create high value share this blog post on your social media ask your friends ask your visitors ask the people in your Facebook groups ask the people in you who land on your Facebook pages ask your Instagram all of your social media followers ask them to share your content along with your content sharing your SEO this is a strategy that you can build on moving forward and remember it's not just about one traffic source it's about multiple traffic sources coming back to your one source which is your blog that will create visitors that will create opt-ins to your mailing list that will create customers for your products so what about paid advertising now what is PPC PPC stands for peer per click now one way to get your traffic off the ground initially is to run some ads now I've did this personally with Pinterest uh, I've run ads on Pinterest to drive traffic to my site I've run ads on Google I've run ads on Facebook which failed miserably but <laughs> and I will admit that but a good way to quickly get you off the ground is to spend a little money on advertising now everything we've discussed so far has been about free traffic now if you create something of high value something that people want something that people are enjoying and you want to get a little bit more reach further than the people in your circle then peer per click is the way to do it so let's talk about Facebook and Google Ads there are two major forms of paid advertising uh, that are extremely popular at the moment uh, for small businesses and major businesses and these are Google Ads Facebook Ads and Instagram Ads and just a reminder that Instagram is owned by Facebook so Facebook Ads and Instagram Ads can all be done from the same control panel now we've all seen Google Ads we've seen the advertised websites at the top of every page based on your keyword so remember if you're not making it to page one of Google for your certain keyword you can run an ad campaign to put your website on the top of Google for certain keywords so in other words someone who is searching for dog training tips for example there will be a site that is number one but if you place an ad on Google with the Google ad then you can sit above this website as paid advertising this is how Google make their money and this is how you can hit the number one spot now depending on what keywords you use and what phrases you use which are all testable you can test all of these in Google using the ad 
control panel and this will accumulate to a cost and then this is where I want to to say a little bit of a warning because it can get expensive it can get expensive searching for keywords it can get expensive running ad campaigns especially if you're not getting the end result so if you're investing a hundred dollars a week or you know fifty dollars a week something like that and you're getting a few subscribers through the door but if you're not doing anything with these subscribers to return your initial ad investment then you're going to run out of money pretty quickly and that's the same that goes for Facebook now Facebook ads work slightly different differently and they can be a lot cheaper or depending on how much you want to spend so Facebook shows ads on the home feeds of Facebook users and you can target the position of your ads based on the interests of that user so that's based on age sex location interests relationship status hobbies social network job title and possibly even income facebook has a huge demographic on the people who it has on its site now the only downfall from this is people who change their hobbies who change their statuses who change their interests and they don't update their facebook profile so you could have a wasted ad but you can run an ad on Facebook for let's say weddings or wedding dresses and target women women with a high disposable income young to middle-aged single and who are engaged so all this is a possibility so you can really drill down into targeting people with your ad campaigns now here's a few tips to remember with an ad campaign always remember keep a budget in mind and do not overspend as ads can become very very expensive and remember to monitor your spending ensure that you do your research when it comes to keywords use the keywords to, the keyword tools provided by Google keyword tools provided by Facebook and really try to get the best out of your ads to gain the most amount of subscribers or the most amount of clicks to get a higher valued to get a high valued lead now what you should also remember is to create an advert which is not going to attract going to attract someone who wants something for free for example so it's easy to create an ad saying free wedding dresses you're going to get an absolute load of clicks but when they land on your site and it's a free wedding dress guide and you're not making any money from that then you really need to think about the type of person that you want to click your ad and this means testing and testing and testing again and having a good converting headline or a good converting text to really drive that ad home so that is something that you really do need to test now the lastly monitor your results how many clicks have you paid for what is the end result what are your numbers did you make any money from it you know you really need to test them campaigns because like I said before you could end up spending a lot of money and we really don't want that so if your ad is doing well test it to make it better if your ad is doing great test it to make it greater test 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 okay just a quick overview we've discussed about SEO we've discussed keywords we've discussed headers we've discussed adding keywords to our images we've discussed high value content we've discussed how to get attention and we've also discussed how to create the perfect blog post by adding a little bit more value than the other guy and really hitting your subject home uh, we talked about social media and the four keys adding value community integrating and consistency now remember don't build your own pages don't start from scratch find where your people are and add value we've also discussed paid advertising 
what was pay-per-click and how you can utilize Google ads and Facebook ads to your advantage. I can't stress enough, and you probably did notice that I stressed enough about testing your ads because I spent thousands on ad, ad campaigns and you know not all of them have worked out very well. So remember, just test, test, test. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. You can see the slides on the right hand side of um, the page, of Day 5's page. I've also added um, a guide in there for you called the Big Traffic Guide. You can use this to your advantage as well. And just remember, don't give up on traffic. Start off, be consistent and provide high value. And I guarantee that you will get traffic back to your blogs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on another video.